The People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Edo State Chapter, has announced the expulsion of former Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu from the party, citing anti-party activities. Shaibu was a Deputy Governor before Godwin Obaseki, before his impeachment. Shaibu was impeached for allegedly leaking classified government documents, amongst other allegations. This comes after Shaibu declared his support for the opposition All Progressives Congress candidate, Monde Okwebolu, in the upcoming September 21st governorship election in Edo State. The Edo State Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, also confirmed the expulsion of the National Vice Chairman, South South of the party, Chief Dan Obi, and the immediate pastor member representing Uredo Federal Constituency, Omogi Ogbedehama. Joining us now is the President, African Public Interest Lawyers Union, Honorable Andri Adeze Wata. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning, Osaroge. Good morning, Oli. It's a pleasure to be on the program this morning. Good to have you join us. Um, uh, interesting developments there, of course, you know, after Shaibu was impeached as Deputy Governor, now he's been kicked out of the PDP. What are your thoughts? You know, does this show, you know, um, division within the PDP or is... You know, do you see this as the PDP really just, you know, taking actions that were necessitated by Shaibu's um, recent actions? Yeah, thank you. You must agree with me that PDP, just like Archibald's book, Things Fall Apart, where the quote of YB, he referred to it as Things Fall Apart, the center cannot hold. May I, and that key is loosed upon the word. PDP as a party, as I speak to you, is completely empty. In my local government, for instance, the party structure led by the leader, Lusara Adams, the entire world leadership, this local government leadership, moved into APC recently. And I think it is this drove of members going in, in their thousands into the APC, that has become a nightmare of the governor. And I can tell you for free that the big masquerade behind this, um, I will say, shambolic you know, uh, expulsion of uh, Chief Danobi, who is the South South Vice Chairman. And just to say that on the 19th of June, the Federal High Court had given an order restraining PDP from taking any steps towards impeaching, uh, sorry, towards uh, either suspending or expelling Chief Danobi, who is their South South uh, Vice Chairman. And unfortunately, just as an afterthought, some um, RACDAC members of the State Working Committee of the PDP in those states quickly announced his expulsion, uh, not to make it look like a standalone. They mentioned the name of the um, candidate of the PD or the aspirant that contested against the Bowser in 2020, who was at that time the member of the House of Reps, Obede Yama, who is a strong force in PDP, and the deputy governor, of course, who naturally, when you look at Shaibu, Shaibu is in court. He's challenging his um, unconstitutional impeachment. And so I'm just that. trying to weaken them. Yeah, me to to interject. Are, are you trying to say that the main target of this action by the PDP is uh, Dan Obi and that the rest are just to make it look uh, like a normal thing and that he's the main target? Obviously, obviously, Olive, and I will give you the specific facts. This matter has been in court. There has been a plan by Obaseki to make Dan Obi lose his position as a leader of the party. Because before Obaseki came into the party in 2020, of course, at that time I was a PDP member. Who were the ones that took Obaseki in? And coincidentally, it was June 19, 2020, that Obaseki joined the PDP. Four years later, on the 19th of June, 2024, the Federal High Court in Benin restrained the party from suspending the person who brought Obaseki to the party. And Obaseki told his lackeys in the party structure to announce the expulsion of Danobu, who gave him a roof over his head when he was beating him. I mean, that's the story of an ingrid. Hamapi uh, and Osaroge referred to uh, emperors. I mean, the governors of uh, states, you know, operating as emperors. If you ask me, the number one emperor governor of Nigeria is Godwin Obaseki. It was because of him I left the party last year. And as I speak to you, there are four litigations challenging the candidacy of Osaroge Gudalo. And Shabu is involved in one of them. And I think if somebody is challenging the candidacy of a person, it means that he has not accepted that person as a candidate of the party. So if they have any contrary view, I think the proper path to two is a part of reconciliation, is a part of peace. You are expelling a member of the National Executive Committee of the party. Danobi is a member of the National Executive Committee of the party. If they are not lawless people, Article 57, Sub 7 says only the National Executive Committee of the party can discipline its members. 
So you find that these are just a band of lawless members of the PDP. They're not being cheap, they're not being disabled in court. You want to institute disciplinary actions against a person who is challenging his unlawful impeachment as deputy governor. You didn't even set up a disciplinary committee. They should go away the Article 57 of their constitution. I want you to um, talk Mr. about Water. to talk about the role of the disciplinary committee. That committee was not set up. It was because there was an order of the federal high court that morning. That was why in the afternoon they gathered together about nine of them and started announcing people's expulsion. Where is that done? Okay, this no, um, um, this I mean, method no of discipline. Of, uh, subjecting them to the disciplinary committee of their part. I mean, PDP is gone. And I'll quickly bring to your attention a video that went viral yesterday, which of course is everywhere in the internet, where the governorship candidate of PDP, as where Godalo said, the party has been factionalized, that when he came in, he thought, oh, that there was peace in the party. There were four factions. As where Godalo, the PDP candidate, identified the legacy faction, the new PDP, the old PDP, and the Obaseki PDP. I mean, I'm using his exact words. Then he said that I came in, they became a new faction, the fifth faction, known as the Philip Shaibu faction. So if a party has five factions, can you take that party seriously? So for us in the APC, All right. Right. Hold on, Mr. Water. Water. celebrating. Mr. Water, let, can you hold on? Uh, Mr. Water, you, you've mentioned something that I, I'd like you to highlight on. You've talked about the process by which you think this should have been handled. There should have been a disciplinary committee because the matter was already in court. I, I want you to, you know, make a comparative analysis of some sort with the case of uh, Nyeso Mwike, who was also accused of anti-party activities by a number of people. Uh, would you say that this was a process that was done in his case? You know, just sort of analyze that, you know, vis-a-vis -vis this. Thank you for that um, 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 observation. I think I was supposed to be very specific in saying that Article 57 of the PDP Constitution outlines a procedure for discipline. Rule 1 says that the party must have a disciplinary committee. That's Rule 1 of Article 57. Then Rule 2 makes it mandatory for the disciplinary committee to be set up for the purpose of disciplining any members. And that disciplinary committee can be set up at any level. It can be at the National Executive Committee level. It can be at the State Executive Committee level. But because there was an order on the 19th, as an afterthought, they just immediately announced the expulsion without setting up or referring the matter to the disciplinary committee. And even Article 6 talks about fairing, that for you to, for the National Executive Committee or any other organ of the party to take any decision, the member must be notified, and he must be given an opportunity to make his representation. All these things were not done, right? Then if you are to compare this with the wicked scenario, of course, the party permitted Wiki to be part of the, uh, the uh, Tinubu government, beyond the fact that Wiki indicated his interest to support the presidential candidate of the APC. And the reasons were very clear, namely that the National Party chairman at the time worked against him. He would call the uh, Tambu and others who worked against him at the grounds of the primaries as hero. And for him, he told him that he, do, he no longer enjoys the confidence of the members of the party. And there was an unwritten agreement that the moment the presidency goes to the north, the chairmanship should come back to the south. I mean, in the spirit of zoning. At that time, there was pressure for the national chairman to step aside. It was his failure to do so that made names of Winky and four other governors of the PDP. So, right, so, even one of them, Shahid Makinde, is still a seventh governor of the PDP. Yeah, so are, are you, Mr. Iwata, Mr. Iwata, just to clarify. Uh, presidential candidate of the APC. Yeah, just to clarify, you know, I think the question really is, trying to, you know, get your thoughts on whether Philip Schreiber's actions supporting the APC candidates, do you see that as, would you term that as anti-party activity um, for a PDP member? If you ask me, I think it is what it is, right? You have No, what it is, is it, and is it, would you say that it is an anti-party, if your candidate in the APC, Matthew Kobolo, Suddenly, or you know, maybe his vice, you know, a, a deputy governorship candidate, suddenly starts to support the Labour Party candidate or some of, of some sort, or the PDP candidate. Would you term that an anti-party activity? Exactly, that is what it is. I okay. can't say that it is not. It is anti-party, but who now determines whether it is anti-party? Is the disciplinary committee defined under Article Fifty-Seven? Because people do certain things for certain reasons, and I'm saying that most political parties, there's what you call 
the conventional aspect of the activities of a political party. And I give you an example in Edo State. Last year, government of Maseki, the executive government of Edo State supported Labour Party, supported the presidential candidates. He sponsored 24 members, or rather 24 candidates of the Edo State House of Assembly under the Labour Party platform. I was one of those who offered that ticket. Is that not anti-party? But as a government disciplined, and that is why my party, the APC, have said, instead of disciplining the lobby for accepting an appointment in the APC government, discipline Obaseki. One of our party leaders, Charles Idaosa, who joined Obaseki June 19, 2020, to join the PDP from the APC, had an appointment in the APC government. He was a member of the board of the Railroad Corporation. Obaseki did not have any issue with this. So I think the PDP as a party is sinking. I mean, yeah. if you suspend the leader of your party, that is the South-South vice chairman, you suspend a person who gave Obaseki his ticket in 2020, because already was already the person that was seen as a presumptive candidate of PDP when Obaseki was thrown out, yanked off from the APC, that uh, the Philip Shrek, who has stood by him, they forced him out of office as deputy governor, not done yet, they don't want him out of the party. I mean, for us in the APC, it is a time for us to celebrate because the emperor in PDP, Obaseki, has destroyed his house. And his own candidate that he's supporting is crying that the party is highly factionalized, that they have five factions. Yeah, so, and so can you go into an election like that? That was why they lost last year's election woefully. In the House of Reps election that took place on the 25th of February last year, PDP did not win one seat. The one they did subsequently, which was uh, the supplementary election, was rigged. The House of Assembly election was rigged. So for us in the APC, it is celebration time. It shows that Obaseki is not a good manager. He left APC because of crisis. He created problems there. He came into PDP. He has created the same crisis. Sadly, in our state, there's no development. Yeah. And that is why the APC, we are offering an alternative to the huge development gap Obaseki has created. My candidate has a five-point agenda to reset a door for prosperity. And when you look at the five-point agenda, the first day, is security of lives and property. In the uh, state, uh, hold on, before we before we get into that aspect, I'm, I'm going to. Is not the order. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have you. I'm going to allow you speak about your candidate. But before we get there, just you know, one clarity on what you're saying. Um, are you agreeing that some of these moves may be anti-party activities, including accepting appointment from the opposition party? Your challenge really is just that they didn't go through Article 57 of the PDP Constitution. Um, before suspending these members? Is that a challenge that you have? Or are you arguing, you know, that this may not even be anti-party activities? My own question is, when the head of the fish is rotting, it affects the body. Isn't that so? In the PDP as it stands, every governor of, the PDP, of a PDP state is the leader of a party. A situation where the head of the house or the head of the fish is involved in anti-party activity, I'm not in the same. It becomes a norm. Yeah, that, that, becomes that is left for the PDP. The yeah, but that is left for the PDP to decide. You know, what I'm asking Obviously, is... And that's the issue some of us have, that okay. the person who is deputy governor, you know, you accuse him of what the governor has you know, done. I mean, that's double standards. Not okay. the body will take such a party very seriously. And I know people I know will reject... All right, hold on, hold on, Honorable Water. The party that has dwelt more on crisis than governance. Honorable Water, in... in in 30 seconds, all right, I will, I, because you, you already started talking about your candidate, you know, and his five-point agenda. He is, has been senator for Edo Central for, for a bit. Can you, can you name three things that Honorable um, Mondeo Pebolo has brought for Edo Central since he has been senator for Edo Central in the time that he's been there? Three things, bills that he has pushed or passed or, you know, uh, started, um, ways that he has developed Edo Central as a senator representing th that area. Yeah, thank you. The moment he became senator, he hit the ground running by, first of all, on the floor of the Nigerian Senate, moving a motion for the federal government to intervene in the deplorable state of the Bini Aochi route because the Ekoma Assis is completely impossible. And he followed up with that by meeting Mr. President. And Mr. President, in response to that motion, and the request of the senator representing Edo Central has ensured that enough resources, a 120 billion, was approved. And of course, the tax credit scheme was activated. And as I speak to you, work has started on the Benin Outer Road, particularly the Ekoma up to Irua axis, 
serious work is being done there. And even beyond that, as a senator, he ensures that members of his constituency are empowered. Before he became a senator, he had always had a scholarship scheme. He has provided over 20 security vehicles to deal with the security challenge in Edo um, Central. When you compare that with the intervention of Aso in of the PDP, you just gave them a part of the sum of the other right. thousand and rejected the request for him to be part of the uh, board of trustees of the security network. All right. I can Mr. Wanta, unfortunately, we have to go now. Uh, there, there are too many things that we need to still talk about. In interestingly, I'd like to find out what the future of um, uh, what's his name, Philip Shaibu's career is going forward. And you know, I, I heard of the gifts given to the APC, and I wonder, you know, if that would influence maybe some form of collaboration in the nearest future. You know, what that would look like. But today is not the day for that conversation. We'll have you join us again. Thank you so much, and we, of course, we look forward to speaking with you again.